In this video, we'll be recapping the story of the 2019 PS4 release, Erica. Now, this game is a live interaction fiction game, so we hold the narrative choices. So, the recap you're about to see is from my gaming experience only, but it should give you a bit of an idea of what roughly happens in the game. As always, I must warn that there, of course, will be spoilers for Erica ahead. That's pretty much how a story recap works. If you don't want the game spoiled but want to find out a bit more about it, then you can check out my spoiler-free review by clicking up here. The game begins and we see a lighter. We wait a few minutes until I realise that by interactive, it means I have to ignite said lighter. We then see a young girl with her father chatting by the fire. The next scene then shows the father dead with a strange symbol carved into his chest. The little girl weeps before seeing a hidden shooter enter the room and fire a gun at us. We then wake up in the modern day and realise that that was just a flashback. Ah, oh, you sneaky fuckers, Sony. This is Erica, the title character of the game whom we control. We receive a parcel outside of our flat and I uh, eventually managed to open it. I was still getting to grips with the controls at the time and oh fucking hell, it's, it, it's a hand. It's a hand in the box, okay. Naturally furious that Amazon have sent us a hand instead of the hair straighteners that we ordered, we call the police. They believe that these hands may be something to do with our father's death, which we saw previously. Despite it happening many years ago, the case remains open, with the killer never being found. As they continue to investigate, we are taken to a safe house, which is actually called Delphi House, and is a mental asylum. Hmm, seems safe. Delphi House is already known to Erica as her dad actually founded it alongside his friend Lucian Flowers. We learn through dialogue that our father was a famed and talented doctor and our mother also worked here before she sadly died. When waiting to be checked in, the house goes all the shining on us and we see weird figures running and hear the phone ringing. We answer the phone and a woman is on the other end who tells us to follow the music. We do so, and this leads us to find an old study with some old case notes about our mother. It seems she worked as a nurse at Delphi House, but was later admitted as a patient. We're eventually checked in by a man with a strange symbol tattoo on his arm. The next day, we explore the house and find some of the patients. We sit down and play the piano with one before she has the nosebleed to end all nosebleeds onto us. Cheers. Sergeant Blake introduces us to Lucian, who speaks very fondly of our late father and gives us his old lighter as a gift. Later, we sneak off for a drink with one of the patients, Toby. She seems more normal than the others, but then she starts to talk about a conspiracy. She claims that the doctors are conducting experiments on the patients in order to try and see visions of the future. She also states that as a side effect, people are having nosebleeds and seizures. Next, we receive another gift from Amazon, and can you believe it, they fuck up again. We find a doll from our childhood and a piece of skin, which showcases a tattoo that we saw recently. Sergeant Blake determines that the skin must be from the night manager, Carl Steinbeck. We return back to our flat and discover it trashed. The phone then rings and the same woman as before tells us that our mother is actually still alive. We are then taken to Chief Inspector David Corker's house and meet with him, Lucian and Sergeant Blake. They claim their newest suspect is a lady named Mia Green, a former patient of Delphi House who was extremely close to our mother. After this meeting, we then suffer a nosebleed, similar to that of some of the patients at Delphi House. Blake and Lucian have to leave and we stay at the Chief Inspector's house. In the night, we hear a noise and find the Chief Inspector dead in similar circumstances to our father. Then, shockingly, Mia Green appears, who we now recognise from our father's killing. It appears it was her who was on the phone previously to Erica and still persists that our mother is alive and echoes the same conspiracy that Toby told us earlier. She gives us a key and asks us to meet her outside Delphi House if we want to know more. Intrigued, we head back and explore the house and find a secret passage. This leads us to a selection of laboratories, all of which show evidence of shady experiments, and we even witness one of the doctors, Dr. Ballard, conducting one. We see Ballard enter a large door which showcases that symbol again from the tattoo. We try the door, but to no avail and are forced to flee. We escape the complex and meet with Mia Green and she's like, hey girl, and knocks us out with a fucking spray thing. Cheers. We kind of wake up in a hallucinogenic state in which Mia tells us more about the conspiracy. She claims the doctors combine science and ancient rituals to try and see the future. They use patients for this, but they require a butterfly, which is a person who has the gift of foresight. 
She adds that that is why our mother is still alive. She is being kept behind that door and is used as the butterfly. Once she dies, the doctors will try and use us as a replacement as we share the same gift. Coming around from the hallucinogens, we ask what happened, and Mia shows us the perfume that she sprayed us with. It's a pink mist or serum which is produced and brewed at Delphi House and was created by our father. It seems to have hallucinogenic mind control capabilities. In a daring attempt to save our mother, we now side with Mia and break into Delphi House. Along the way, we are confronted by Sergeant Blake, who Mia shoots, claiming he is in on the conspiracy. Rest in peace, Sergeant Blake. Mia then suffers from another nosebleed and can no longer go on. She hands us her gun and we continue on the search. Along the way, we meet our friend Toby, who is now unconscious and tied to a gurney. We confront Dr. Ballard, who tells us the only way to wake her would cause a seizure and she would need an adrenaline shot immediately straight to the heart. Then another patient, Kirsty, arrives, also looking for Toby. This gives Ballard a perfect distraction and she manages to escape. We remove the medical equipment from Toby and she begins to hemorrhage. We apply the adrenaline shot and Toby begins to come around. Kirsty helps Toby get away whilst we continue. Next, we bump into Lucian, who is leaving the mysterious door. We aim our gun at him and demand answers. He refutes the conspiracy claims and suggests it's all in our head and that we need mental help and help that he can provide. We're like, nah mate, fuck off, and we shoot him. Examining his body shows that this was the correct thing to do as he has a sedation needle in his hand ready to prick us with. We also find a key to the door and subsequently enter. Inside we find lots of vines and a shrine type altar. Also present is lots of the pink hallucinogenic serum. Presumably this is where subjects inhale the serum and have their visions. We decide to set the vines alight and in turn the whole of Delphi house burns. We leave and find Toby and Kirsty outside of the house and leave with each other into the darkness, finally free from the madness of Delphi house. And that is what happens in Erica. Albeit there are several different endings, all differing very slightly. The one you saw here is what is considered the good ending and the one that I got on my play. If you wish to see all of the endings, here's a useful video. You might feel at this point like you're struggling to understand the plot. Don't worry, I still do a little bit. It's a deep and complex narrative, but I applaud the developers on what was a really interesting experience. Don't forget you can see the full review of this game and my score out of 100 by clicking here or subscribe for more videos.